Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Motoraji here back with a new video lesson for y'all. I have decided to give this new series of lessons a shot where I discuss production, recording, and mixing in a home studio setup, okay? So for those of you who aren't aware, um, my first two albums, I mean, I only have two. So the first and second album I produced myself. The first one was not the greatest production, but the second one I made drastic improvements and changes to my workflow and obviously with uh, accumulation of a bunch of gear and plugins, which enabled me to get a good sound quality within the confinements of my home studio. And the second album in particular, I even recorded drums right there. Everything was recorded here, except my guest musicians and I also mixed the album here, okay? So this is a very, very humble take on making music from a production recording and mixing front okay so before i get to the actual lesson do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit the notification bell so you don't miss out any new videos and if you haven't checked out the membership platform yet do check it out there's a bunch of exclusive perks on there that you get at a small nominal fee on a monthly basis so check it out and feel free to reach out if you have any questions or suggestions for the channel or whatever it is okay so i want to talk about recording bass i did do a video on recording tips when i first got the bass think about close to a year ago but I want to go into slight more detail with this particular video three things you're gonna need needless to say you're gonna need a bass an interface and no I did not mean for this to rhyme and a computer okay and with your computer a DAW a digital audio workstation so a digital audio workstation is basically a replication of an actual analog workstation which they used to record tape with in the past so I use Logic because I've been using Logic for 12 to 13 years. I'm just so used to it. My workflow is very efficient. I'm quick. I know my way around it in terms of shortcuts, recalling anything, moving things around, editing, mixing. It's just home for me. And I will never even try to do use another door. So, yeah. So I have my base. Okay. The first thing I want to talk about is signal chain. So, obviously, to simplify things, I can take a cable bass straight into my interface okay so on this particular focus right interface there is an instrument enable button here which basically gives me more gain headroom since basses and guitars can have a slightly lower output or even microphones it depends on context overall so channel one is dedicated to bass on my interface all right and you're going to see the signal Okay, you'll also notice those are not the biggest looking waveforms, which is great because you don't want this that's already peaking and you can hear the noise that comes with it. So I usually am between 11 and 12, sometimes 12 o'clock. So, I set my gain according to the way I play, my touch. I don't have the heaviest of touches, so being at 12 o'clock is rather efficient for me. If I had a slightly uh, heavier touch, or if I am recording something that I need to dig in, I dial the gain back because then I'm actually going to reproduce more output from my actual fingers. So that is something to keep in mind, okay? So me, my bass, I go into this mark bass, boost the pedal, it's an old ass pedal, where you can barely see anything on it. It's got two um, settings here I can dial in, which is the vintage loudspeaker emulator and then the variable phase filter, pre-shape, oh, I can't even remember, but I did talk about it in an older video. And from there, I'm going into my interface, okay? And that goes into logic and on logic, as you can see, input one, dedicated to my bass, that was the clipping signal from earlier. Input three is my vocal mic, which is muted, obviously, because if I unmute, there's going to be feedback. So you'll also notice I have a gain plugin on there, and then I also have a space designer reverb, okay? So I use the reverb when I want to go for a chimey sound, which I use for certain lesson intros, but I play more chords, those kind of things. Um, but right now it's disengaged because I'm just talking from a very general standpoint, okay? So... For me, with the bass, unlike guitar or piano or keys, or even drums for that matter, to certain extents, I don't like to dial in all the sounds that I wish to use. If I want reverb on my bass solo, for example, I'm not going to record with the reverb because it affects the way you play. 
I rather do it post production. Okay, so pre and post production are two things you really have to keep in mind because it's it can make or break your workflow. So base into interface onto logic. As you can see, the waveforms. also notice when I play fast the waveforms are rather small compared to which is fine because let's say I want it to level match after I record I can just automate the volume there or I can drop the volume of the part where the waveforms are bigger or people throw on compression but that is really entering into a territory where things can get rather awkward quickly. So I will do a whole video on compression for bass dedicated to that to discuss my thoughts and opinions and the way I use it when I record. Okay, so very simple, bass into the interface, record, get a decent level where I don't have too much noise and I don't have peaking levels on dynamic fronts. Okay, meaning as soft as I play, That's as hard as I usually play with this gain. If I drop the gain, I might try to dig in, let's say like when I play these kind of grooves, where if I leave the gain there, as you can see, my signal is clipping, but it could be fine. But let me dial this back a little to 11 o'clock. Okay, now you will notice the waveforms are not as big compared to there, which is fine because I have a gain plug in here, so I can boost it if I want to. Okay, so don't get too fixated on trying to get right from the get-go the perfect signal and the perfect levels and everything. When you get started with this stuff, there's so much trial and error. So be more focused on getting your signal chain recorded cleanly at a decent level and then mess around with the gain on your interface to see do I have more wiggle room but then if I go into a slap it starts to distort so I need to dial it back but then when I play finger style it feels rather soft or quieter so if you're recording to a track you drop the track raise your bass volume right here on the fader so you can hear yourself a little better dial back the gain and then once you record you can actually start to mess around by EQing things or using compression so on and so forth okay so this is very, very basic stuff, and I want to dedicate this video purely to just that. And in the next lesson, I will talk about other stuff, but this is going to be a whole series of videos that I'm going to continue to put out because this has become a very newly discovered, invoked passion in me, considering last year of just being home and spending a lot of money on Waves plugins. So, yep, if you have any questions or suggestions to do with these kind of videos, do reach out to me, leave a comment below, or email me feel free. All right. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you get something out of this and I'll see you guys in the shed until the next one. Peace.